Hello everyone, this is Goosebumps Godzilla, and we have recently hit 300 subscribers not too long ago. Honestly though, we did hit 302 subscribers not too long ago, so thank you guys so much for 302 subscribers. Sorry this took a little while to make. I did record um, a version of this previously, but it was a bit long. It was about an hour, and um, honestly I kind of rushed it at the end um, with some of the best Goosebumps episodes, because I'm ranking the Goosebumps episodes in this video from... The very worst um, to the very best, and you know I kind of rushed it at the end mainly because the throat was hurting or my throat was hurting, and also there's just it was super long. And I tried to shorten it up, so I'm gonna try to you know not rush through the end stuff like that. Also, I feel like I was a bit negative in the previous video because I was kind of negative on the episodes until like the six out of tens, and honestly the episodes really aren't that bad. The only bad one would probably be the last one. Well, there are bad ones, you know. For anyway, I'm kind of getting off topic. So let's get to the ranking for the Goosebumps episodes. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to be telling you guys, um, basically, in the previous video. Sorry this is a little disjointed, but basically, in the previous video, I asked you guys to uh, put down your favorite Goosebumps episode. And, you know, I'm going to be telling you guys what overall people who commented in the last video voted on as the best Goosebumps episode and stuff like that. But first, let's get through the ranking, and let's start off with The Ghost Next Door. Now, The Ghost Next Door is the worst Goosebumps episode, in my personal opinion. Um, and that's mainly because, um, mainly, it's kind of bland. Uh, the main antagonist of the story isn't that great. That's a problem that I do have with a bunch of these episodes in the bottom, you know, area, is the fact that I didn't really like the main antagonist too much. And the main antagonist of this one... It's just not the greatest. Um, he isn't that great of an antagonist in the book, but I really enjoy the book for a bunch of whole other reason and reason, reasons. I'm sorry about that. And also, in the episode, the main protagonist isn't half as likable as in the book. And also, the neighbor kid I did not like at all in the episode, while in the book I really enjoyed uh, the neighbor kid. And so you can just see that uh, the episode isn't really that great. I know a couple of people who like it, or I've heard some people who liked it, but I didn't really like this episode too much. Uh, again, mainly because the antagonist and the neighbor kid, they kind of ruined the whole entire episode for me. And also, the post person in here isn't as great also as he could have been, as in the book. Um, but anyway, next we have the second worst Goosebumps episode ever made, and that is Stay Out of the Basement. And so, Stay Out of the Basement's main problem, I guess, is the antagonist. There's no real problem, I would say, with the Stay Out of the Basement episode. And actually, the first time I watched it, I actually really, really enjoyed the Stay Out of the Basement episode. But after a couple of times of watching it, I really didn't like it. I don't know if it's because the main protagonist, or not the main protagonist, the main antagonist was bad. I'm not really sure. Um, I guess I just really don't know. I just really... Didn't really like this episode. I guess it wasn't as suspenseful um, as the book because I really loved the book and the episode just isn't that great, personally. But anyway, next we have It Came From Beneath the Sink. So It Came From Beneath the Sink, of course, suffers from the fact that the main antagonist is the sponge. And also the sponge in here isn't shown to be that powerful. Um, and nothing really threatening happens with the sponge. I mean... The whole power of the sponge, not getting into too much spoilers, is the fact that it causes bad luck um, to whoever has it. But we don't really get that much of bad luck. I mean, the worst thing that happens, it involves the dog getting lost, and also the plants die, but that's pretty much it. Nothing really threatening. Um, I think if they made more threatening stuff happen, possibly like someone nearly died or something like that, I think it would make it a whole lot scarier. Maybe that does happen in the episode. But, from what I remember, it doesn't. And so that's kind of my main problem with the story is, well, you know, it does suffer from the fact, again, that there is a killer sponge in here, and that's not really not that scary. or probably entertaining to watch. I think they could have made it a bit more dangerous if life-threatening stuff did happen. Maybe it did happen in the episode, but I guess nothing really threatening to an extent that you want to figure out what happens next, I guess, and want them to get rid of it. Not really sure... Anyway, next we have Deep Trouble, and Deep Trouble, honestly, has some pretty cool special effects in here for the Goosebumps show. The giant animals in here are really cool looking, especially the fish in the first part, so they have a really cool stuff going on. That's kind of 
I guess a lot that happens in season four is they have these really great special effects, but the episodes aren't the greatest. Um, I think there's only like four or five episodes, not counting the two parts in uh, season four for the Goosebumps original series and stuff like that. And Deep Trouble's first part also mainly suffers from the fact that it's super boring. The main antagonist isn't the greatest. Um, I kind of wish it was more of a monster than a human, but, you know, that kind of happens in the Deep Trouble books mainly. Most of the time, the main antagonist is a human. So, I'm not really sure. The main antagonist could have been better. And the second part is better than the first part, but not by too much. Um, but still, the special effects, as I said before, are really, really cool to watch. Um, especially for the Goosebumps TV series, which isn't really known for their special effects. I really thought the special effects in here were great. Anyway, so next we have One Day at Horrorland as, you know, the next episode in this ranking. And also, this is sort of like Stay Out of the Basement. The first time I watched One Day of Horrorland was actually kind of scary, and I really thought it was great, but after re-watching it, I didn't think it was that great. Some minor issues that I do have with it is the fact that it's not that of much of an amusement park. I know they had a cheap budget, but honestly, Horrorland's just like this wooded area with a couple of rides, but my main problem with the episode is the fact that it kind of gets repetitive after a little while. Basically, what happens in the episode is the main protagonist goes inside a ride. They think it's really scary and think it's real. You know, something scary happens. They think it's real. Then they get out and, you know, they think it's all a joke and they go over it again. I'm not... That kind of happens in the book, but in the book, they kind of get past the fact that Orland's evil and they actually try to start doing stuff. Instead of in the episode where it just goes on over and over and over with all these different rides, and again, it kind of gets old. And also, I don't think it's as scary as in the book. I don't know why, but the book in their descriptions are a whole lot scarier than what happens in the episode. So that's kind of another problem, especially the House of Mirrors thing. It was a whole lot better in the book than it was in the episode. And so anyway, guys, I was kind of me nitpicking um, about the house. Uh, House of Mirrors and the whole wooded thing, but I do have to say the costumes in here were pretty great for the Horrorland horrors for, you know, the Goosebumps budget and stuff like that, and the twist was okay at best, um, not the greatest, but it was still an okay twist, um, anyway, next we have The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight, and so I'm not a big fan of the book, so I'm obviously probably not going to be a big fan of the episode, and yeah, the antagonists aren't the greatest, the Scarecrows, you know, easily get destroyed um in the book i think it was kind of harder to kill them off i'm not really sure i just read a blurb recently because i want to do a theory on scarecrow walks at midnight soon but you know the scarecrows are obviously kind of easy to get rid of i wish they had more time the scarecrows do look creepy though i do have to say but i think they could have had more time to be on the screen and do stuff than what happens in the episode where really they don't appear until the end, and then they're easily dispatched of, so, you know, that's kind of the biggest issue I have with The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. And so next, guys, we have Be Careful What You Wish For, um, and that is based off the Goosebumps book from the original series, Be Careful What You Wish For. And so, honestly, Be Careful What You Wish For is not the greatest, mainly because of the plot, you know, the whole be careful what you wish for thing, you wish something, then that happens, but in a bad way, that's kind of what happens, and they use that so much in so many different material, and in all forms pretty much of horror entertainment or something like that, they use this concept a lot, and it kind of gets old, I don't know, that's kind of the biggest issue in the episode for me, but still, there are some redeeming qualities, um, like the whole uh, fly thing that happened, that was pretty cool, but other than that, not too much to see, and the concept really just has gotten really old. And next we have Strained Peas, and this is the Goosebumps episode known for the, you know, having the evil baby as the antagonist. I'm not a big fan of the book, the book was a little darker and stuff like that than the episode, but I'm not a big fan of the Tales of Giving Goosebumps book. It's probably, in my personal opinion, the worst in the Tales of Giving Goosebumps series. And so I'm not a big fan of the Strain Peas book. And the episode was, I think, a little bit better. Uh, a lot of people point out the fact that the CGI for the baby was bad, but that doesn't really bother me as much 
as it, you know, most people say it is. Maybe it bothers them a lot, uh, but it didn't really bother me too much. Um, still, though, the antagonist being a baby was a big major flaw with the Strain Peas episode, so that was kind of the biggest problem with Strain Peas, really. Uh, anyway, next we have Let's Get Invisible. And so Let's Get Invisible, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I don't really remember this episode too well. Um, also, I don't really remember the book too well. Uh, I just remember not really liking it. It was kind of boring. But in the episode, I mainly just found this one very forgettable. I don't know, I guess. And I kind of wish they spent more time in the mirror dimension. I was really excited to see how the episode would pull off the whole mirror dimension thing and stuff like that. But they didn't really do that. I don't know. They did sort of do it, but it was kind of disappointing how they did it. Um, but, you know, that was kind of let's get invisible. Next week, though, have a Goosebumps episode that I really love the book that it's based on, and that is How to Kill a Monster. I love the book for How to Kill a Monster, but the episode wasn't that great. Um, this is mainly because I didn't really like the main protagonist and the main protagonist's brother in this episode. I don't know, um, and also the grandparents I didn't like too well either. I thought they were kind of funny in the book, but in the episode they weren't as fun, in my personal opinion. And also, I kind of wish they did more of the swamp setting. Didn't really do too much. That's kind of a nitpick that I have with it. And also the kind of show the monster um, as not being that big of a threat, honestly, because one way they try to dispatch of the monster, it knocks him out, I think, and that is when they feed him hot sauce or something like that. So the monster isn't that powerful, and he's not that threatening as he is in the book. Um, of course, he ain't, he, he, I'm sorry about that. Um, he isn't that threatening um, in the book after you realize a twist of, you know, what his weakness is. But still, before that, though, it's really fun to, in the story, in the episode, he just comes across as very weak, very, I don't know, not that dangerous. And so next we have on the list, Don't Go to Sleep. And Don't Go to Sleep is not as great as the book. I'm not a big fan of the book. Uh, mainly because the whole dimension thing that they have in there isn't really as explored as it could have. They have a really cool title, and the book has really great cover art. And I think they could have done a whole lot with it. But in the episode, it's just kind of uh, basically the main protagonist waking up in a different area or different reality in which he has another job and stuff like that pretty much and in the book they kind of do some different things in there like he turns into a monster or a squirrel or something like that and that he just gets a new job and nothing really changes other than the fact that he's got a job and you know that's obviously not as interesting as the main protagonist you know turning to a monster or something like that and so that's probably the biggest issue i have also they try to squeeze in a moral in there and that didn't really work out too well it's kind of boring how they put in the moral and also the antagonists weren't the greatest but still, special effects were cool, and the antagonists um, were kind of interesting. They weren't deadly or anything like that, but they were fine. Uh, next we have, though, Say Cheese and Die Again. And so I know a lot of people who really, really do not like this episode. I think it's fine. I think it's kind of entertaining to watch. Um, it isn't, you know, really a great episode. But I found it kind of enjoyable to watch. It was kind of entertaining. Um, probably not as good as the first one, but just a little bit less than good for that one, because I'm not a big fan of the Say Cheese and Die episode to begin with, and I don't even like Say Cheese and Die Again at all. It's probably in the top five worst Goosebumps books for me. So yeah, I don't really like Say Cheese and Die Again too much. Anyways, so next we have Say Cheese and Die Again. Say Cheese and Die. I was about to say Say Cheese and Die Again. So Say Cheese and Die also is kind of similar to Say Cheese and Die Again. And, you know, it's just the same sort of thing uh, happens in this one pretty much, except less goofy. This one's more darker, like someone disappears, stuff like that. And the episode's fine. Uh, that's really all I can say for it. It's not that great. It's not half as good as the book. But still, it's pretty decent. Um, again, not the greatest Goosebumps episode ever made, but still pretty good. Anyway, uh, let's get on to the next Goosebumps episode on the list, and that is The Cry of the Cat. And so basically, The Cry of the Cat book, I'm sorry I'm comparing the book to the episode so much in this video, but I really love the, the Cry of the Cat book. It's pretty decent, but in the episode, 
it's not as great. I don't like it, the fact that they changed the plot so much uh, to end the episode to sort of make it a whole like movie set sort of thing. I don't know. Didn't really enjoy that too much, and the first part was honestly really bad. The first time I watched the first part to Cry of the Cat, I didn't even bother watching the second part because I didn't even like it too much. But honestly, the second part was really solid. Um, That definitely makes Cry of the Cat go way up on the list. It would probably be way down on the list if, you know, it was just for the first part. But honestly, the second part really drove up this episode, ripped the cat out of a really cool design in the second part. Um, and, I don't know, Rip and the second part really just saved this episode from really not being too great, from being a really great episode. But, again, the first part kind of drags it down. I would probably give the second part maybe like an 8 out of 10 um, if I have it personally, but I give the first part probably like a 2 out of 10. So that kind of drags it down because the second part honestly is pretty decent. And so that's why it's at a 4 out of 10, or not a 4 out of 10, sorry. I would give it a 4 out of 10. But anyway, next we have Return of the Mummy. And Return of the Mummy has a really cool design for the set. And the mummy was really cool in here. Didn't like the main antagonist too much, Neela Ramahad. And also the acting wasn't that great, but it's Goosebumps, and they didn't really have the highest budget, so I understand. But still, the special effects in here were pretty cool. Um, the mummy was really great. I wish he had more time to be on the screen, but it was really, really great for, you know, when the mummy was in there. And again, the set design was cool. Um, a whole lot of redeeming you know, aspects to the story. But still, you know, there is the antagonist who isn't the greatest, and the acting isn't that great either. And so next we have uh, the blob that ate everyone. And the blob that ate everyone is also a really, really solid episode when it comes to special effects and stuff like that. My main problem is the episode feels really, really short. I'm not really sure when the blob finally gets in there. It feels like maybe two minutes before he's dead. And stuff like that, and I didn't really like that. And again, though, the special effects were great. Everything about this episode was really great. It just felt so short, and the ending wasn't that climactic. And that's pretty much the biggest issue with the blob that ate everyone. And so next, now we're getting into, I guess, more positive review or, you know, ranking. Those, pretty much um, everything after um, Say Cheese and Die was, you know more positive, I would say, better episodes. And so now we have You Can't Scare Me. And You Can't Scare Me is also an episode that's very, very entertaining. A lot of people don't like it because it's not that close to the book at all. Also, the main characters don't really have a reason to do what they're doing in the episode. But I have to say the Mud Monster costume was really great. I liked it how they kind of did more chase scenes in here, but again, it was kind of weird, especially the twist. Uh, that was kind of strange, but, you know, uh, You Can't Scare Me has everything really great until, honestly, the twist and stuff like that. So, pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it for You Can't Scare Me. Really solid episode, just wish the ending was a bit, you know, better. Anyway, next we have My Best Friend is Invisible. And it's sort of like, uh, You Can't Scare Me. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the My Best Friend, Friend is Invisible book. The episode is considerably better. And I think they could handle though, the twist better, because that was honestly the best thing about My Best Friend is Invisible was the crazy twist. Pretty much the twist was the only redeeming aspect. Everything else, My Best Friend is Invisible, is just kind of boring. I wish they give, you know, like, the invisible... Uh, boy or something like that, more of an antag antagonistic role where he actually does evil things. I think they could have um, really benefited from that. I wish Stein would write Invisible Man sort of story where the invisible person is actually evil instead of most of the time it's the main protagonist turning invisible or an invisible person is actually a really nice person, which is what happens in My Best Friend is Invisible. But still, it's a pretty decent episode. Could have been better, but it's okay. Anyway, next we have, um, let me see, a Teacher's Pet. And Teacher's Pet has a really cool atmosphere. I like it how they changed it from, like, a school to, you know, a camp, sort of, overnight camp sort of thing. 
Um, the concept was a little strange, especially with that bunny with the rabbits, a rabbit with a lizard's face. That was a little weird, and the concept was a little strange. Um, but still, I like the whole overnight camp atmosphere to the story and stuff like that. And while the antagonist wasn't that good, and special effects weren't that great either, um, he was kind of threatening. The way they got rid of him was kind of easy, though. Kind of got rid of him kind of easy. But still, I really like the overnight camp atmosphere to the story. That it really saved this episode from being not too great. But anyway, next we have on the list. Um, let me see. Um, sorry, I have this on the list, and, you know, it's kind of gotten out of order, you know, it kind of changed stuff up in my mind, but still, next we have the Haunted Mask, and so everyone really loves the Haunted Mask episode, oh, I've seen a lot of lists and stuff like that saying this one's the best Goosebumps episode of all time, and the first time I watched it, I thought it was pretty decent, but I've seen this episode so many times, and I really dragged it down for being a pretty decent episode to not that great of an episode. Again, if you noticed in my top 10 best Goosebumps episode sort of video, I did say that this was the 10th best Goosebumps episode, but since then, after I've seen it a couple of times, I've just got so sick of it, because I've seen this episode a lot, a whole lot of times, that's really just dragged it down uh, to being, you know, a little lower than it was previously, but still, pretty decent episode. And stuff like that, but still not the greatest. And so anyway, guys, next we have, um, let me see, Vampire Breath. And Vampire Breath is a really great Goosebumps book. The episode's not that great, but the set design was pretty cool. The antagonist, Count Nightwing, was pretty cool as well. The twist, I thought, was um, out of nowhere. After all, though, if you have read the book, it's kind of not out of nowhere, but still... If you haven't, it's kind of out of nowhere twist, and it's kind of weird, but still is fine. Um, and also, I really like pretty much everything about this episode, except uh, Count Nightwing. While he was a great antagonist, wasn't as threatening as he could have been, and stuff like that. But I really love the concept. It's a really great episode. I kind of wish they went more similar to the book, because they changed a lot of aspects from the book to the episode and stuff like that. So that's why I really didn't like Vampire Breath as much as it could have been. But next, guys, we have Go Eat Worms. And Go Eat Worms is honestly a Goosebumps book and episode that everyone really hates. I love the book. I know a lot of people, including Arl Stein himself, really doesn't like the book. But I I thought it was pretty decent. I have an odd taste in Goosebumps books, honestly. Um, But... Still, I thought the Go Eat Worms episode was pretty solid. Again, not the greatest. Um, I kind of wish they spent more time with the giant worm and stuff like that. And the antagonist isn't likable. But honestly, there's a bunch of Goosebumps books where the antagonist isn't likable. But it's still a pretty solid book, like Headless Halloween or something like that. And the twist was strange. But I, I thought the special effects were pretty cool in there. Um... And stuff like that, mainly special effects. I just wish we saw the giant worm more and stuff like that. But anyway, next we have, um, well, let me see, uh, Bad Hair Day. And this is the episode with Amazo, the magician in there. And, um, it was pretty decent. The antagonist could have been better. But I really liked, again, the special effects in here. Uh, the acting was pretty good, actually. Kind of wish uh, the little sister was a bit meaner, maybe more like Tara, but she isn't really that mean in the story. She's just not very nice. Um, but still, I kind of wish she was more like Tara. I think that could have made it the episode a whole lot better. But still, again, pretty decent episode. Not as great as the book, but still a really decent episode. Um, next, we have, um, let me see, um, uh, Welcome to Camp Nightmare. And Welcome to Camp Nightmare is a really great episode. Larry in there is definitely a really great character in the Welcome to Camp Nightmare episode. I think the acting was great in here. Um, I, it's sort of the same problem, though, I have with the Haunted Mask is I've seen this episode a lot for some weird reason. I don't know. I've seen this episode so many times. I even remember a bunch of the lines in there. I noticed that while I was reading uh, the Goosebumps Presents version of this that I remember so many of the parts of this story. And so that kind of makes it, I don't really want to watch that much anymore just because 
I've seen it so many times that I just kind of got sick of it. But it's still a really, really decent episode. If you haven't seen it before, you go ahead and watch it. If you've only seen it twice, then I would recommend still watching. But don't watch it a whole lot because you will get sick of it. And so next, guys, we have um, the Haunted House Game, I believe. And the Haunted House Game... It's also a really great episode. I like how it's different from the short story, honestly. I found the short story very confusing. And I liked how they kind of changed it up from the short story. And overall, it's pretty decent. Not that much I have to say about it, mainly because I don't remember it too well. But pretty decent episode. But anyway, guys, next we have the Ghost Speech episode. And overall, it's kind of the same as the book. I think it's fine. A little boring. But the antagonists were pretty cool. I like the twist involving that, even though I've already read the book, I think, before I watched the episode. So it's kind of ruined, but, you know, they're adaptations. And the twist was pretty dark, I guess, and it was pretty cool. But that's all I have to say about the Ghost Speech episode. Um, not that much. Pretty decent. Pretty great. Um, we're getting more into the really great episode realm now. Um, pretty much from, um, you know, honestly... Uh, tried the cat to uh the one we're at now it's mainly been entertaining and really okay great you know on that realm sort of episode now we're going into the really really good episodes and so let's go off with the house of no return the house of no return honestly is kind of scary uh i thought the twist was really great everything else beforehand though is just kind of you sit down and wait for the finale to happen when the finale happens is Really solid, great finale, really honestly kind of scary, but beforehand though, it's not, you know, scary at all, mainly just build up, and that's kind of the thing that's dragging it down, but still, the twist is worth all that weight, it's really great twist, honestly, very, very scary. So next, guys, we have, um, let me see, the Shocker on Shock Street episode, and... I found this one not as great as the book. I'm not a big fan of the book, honestly, but still, this episode was pretty great. Um, I wish they had the giant praying mantises in here, but the special effects, the costumes, the set design, the acting were all very, very great. Um, I just wish the giant praying mantises were in there. And also, the twist was strange, but that was also in the book, and in the book, I was super surprised by that, so... I guess you could say that's a pretty decent twist, even though I did not see it coming. Kind of ruined the book slightly, but still, the Shocker on Shock Street episode was pretty great. But next, we have the Phantom of the Auditorium episode. So I really love the book. It's not even close to coming up to the book. But in the Phantom of the Auditorium episode, the antagonist was pretty okay. Um, and stuff like that, but overall... Pretty decent episode. Not that much to have to say about it. Just very entertaining. Uh, main antagonist wasn't the... Or not main antagonist. Main protagonist wasn't the greatest. But still, I really, really enjoyed this episode. But next, we have the Bride of the Living Dummy episode. And, you know, pretty much all the sloppy episodes have really great special effects and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of the sloppy books. Of course, I am a huge fan of the sloppy books, but... Not as great, and I find, kind of find them a little repetitive. But anyway, the slappy episodes are really decent. Um, this one's also really decent. The twist, though, is a little disturbing. Honestly, the first time I watched it, I was very much disturbed by the twist. Um, but other than that, everything else is really great for this episode. Special effects, everything about that. Really great. Sloppy is really great in this episode. Anyway, guys, next we have... The Night of the Living Dummy 2 episode. And very similar to Pride of the Living Dummy, except with not a disturbing twist in the end. Um, I really love pretty much every aspect about this episode. The main protagonist, uh, I don't know, it was okay. Uh, not as great as it could have been. That's kind of my problem with some of the antagonists in this list. But still, I really enjoyed the Night of the Living Dummy 2 episode. Um, the special effects, the Sloppy was great. Everything about this episode was pretty great. Um, not that much I have to say about the sloppy episodes, mainly because they're all really decent. Uh, anyway, next, guys, we have Welcome to Dead House. This one's better, I would say, than the book. 
The books, not my favorite. I think they just have so much buildup, and then the payoff isn't that great. Um, but the antagonists of the Darkfall Residents are really cool in here. And I like how this one had more of a chase in there, unlike in the episode where it's not really doesn't have that much of a chase. So yeah, that was pretty cool. And the twist was not as great as it could have been, but still, overall, really decent episode. I really liked Welcome to Dead House. Anyway, guys, now we have Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. And the thing that really carries this episode, for me at least, is um, the piano teacher, uh, the one that's supposed to look like Santa Claus. I can't really remember his name. The acting for him is really solid. I think he's the guy who plays um, Dr. Vink in the Ari Freya Dark episode, and also the showman guy in the um, Tale of Laughing in the Dark, also in Ari Freya Dark. And in uh, the Piano Lessons Can Be Murder episode, uh, he's really great in this episode. Um, really kind of creepy in a way and stuff like that. And my only big issue with it is the... I'm, I'm sorry I keep talking about the twist, but in the twist at the end, it was kind of dumb, honestly. Um, everything else, though, was really, really great about this episode. Again, special effects were astounding. The acting was great. And... Um, Pretty much everything about this episode was great. If they just kind of changed the twist in the end, you know, where the ghost is forcing the person, I'm not going to say too much, uh, you know, in the end about the piano and stuff like that, uh, I just didn't like that too much. Uh, anyway, I thought that was just kind of goofy and it's kind of off the tone of the episode, which was a little dark in a way. But anyway, next we have Chilogy. And Chilogy is actually the only episode in the entire original series not to be based on a book by R.L. Stein. It was own, their own original creation, and the first part was really solid. Um, I like the whole special effects in here. The whole Carlsville concept was really great. The second and third part were okay. A little disappointing compared to the first part, but still, all really, really decent episodes. But anyway, guys, next on the list, we do have The Haunted Mask. And I actually enjoyed the Haunted Mask 2 episode more than this uh, episode for the Haunted Mask. Mainly because I found this one more climactic in the ending. Honestly, in the Haunted Mask, the ending wasn't as half as climactic as the Haunted Mask 2. And I really like this one better than the book because how they got rid of the book, how they not got rid of the book, how they got rid of the mask in the book wasn't very, you know, interesting. It was kind of weird. But still... In the episode, they had a more of a climactic way to get rid of the mask. And also, I really liked it that the Hun mask from the first one returned and stuff like that. I found that really interesting. Very cool and a great, you know, climax for the Haunted Mask episodes and stuff like that. Honestly, a really great uh, Goosebumps episode. And so now, I'm sorry about this. Uh, this is actually really shorter. Um, we're almost done, actually, with... Maybe like 10 more or so, and we're only 33 minutes in. Last time it was about an hour, so this is really great. Um, anyway, guys, next we have Werewolf Skin. And Werewolf Skin is uh, really great. The special effects were great. I don't like the main, main protagonist too much. He kind of gets on my nerves a little bit. But other than that, honestly, everything about this episode was really great. Um, I'm sorry I'm saying really great a lot, but... Uh, the main antagonist, the werewolves, really cool. The mystery was pretty cool. Honestly, I would say this is better than the book. Uh, overall, honestly, it's a thousand times better than the book. The book was a little forgettable, and I kind of wish they added in more with Halloween, though, like in the book. But still, the werewolf skin was a really great Goosebumps episode. And now we have How I Got My Shrunken Head. And How I Got My Shrunken Head is another really, really great Goosebumps episode. Um, mainly because the whole entire book, in general, the book itself is a really great Goosebumps book. And how I got my shrunken head is a really great adaptation of that. I kind of wish they added some of the more jungle aspects and how they survive and stuff like that. When they really on only really did quicksand, wish they could have had more creativity with that. But still, overall, pretty decent Goosebumps episode. The special effects for the shrunken head were pretty cool as well. And overall, really great Goosebumps episode. Uh, I need to stop saying that. But 
Anyway, guys, next we have Night in Terror Tower. And the book's really, really great, and I'm saying really great, and I'm sorry about that. Also, we the episode is just as great as the book. Um, it basically has some really cool time travel in here. Um, the main antagonist is pretty cool. Uh, again, I really love the time travel aspect to this story. And also, the second part is not as great as the first part, honestly, but still, the second part was pretty decent. Uh, again, the antagonist was great, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the Night and Terror Tower episode. Anyway, so, let's get on to the Headless Ghost. And so I'm not a big fan of the Headless Ghost book, but the episode I found really great. The antagonists were super scary, especially that one involving the ice cream. That was a pretty creepy part of the episode and stuff like that. And just overall, very scary episode. Uh, kind of dark, um, but still really, really decent. Uh, highly recommend it and stuff like that. The twist wasn't th that creative, though. But other than that, I would say overall, it's a pretty, pretty decent Goosebumps episode. And so now we are at some of the greatest, all-time greatest Goosebumps episodes, starting out with an old story. And an old story, you know, kind of sounds like it's kind of an odd concept, but it kind of does, especially the reasoning behind the concept. But other than that, um, it was pretty, pretty uh, interesting. It was kind of goofy and a little weird, but I really enjoyed that aspect, actually, in this episode and stuff like that. I would have to say this is a really, really great Goosebumps episode and definitely one of my all-time favorites. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the old story. The prosthetics were also really decent as well. And the acting was great as well, also. <laughs> um, um, and then we have the Monster Blood episodes. Now, the first part was okay. It was kind of cheesy and a little strange. But the second part was great. I kind of wish they copied more of the Monster Blood 2 story with Cuddles Hamster and stuff. But the whole aspect that they're on an airplane and they have no real way to run away or escape from the monster blood, I found very, very interesting. And honestly, the monster blood was really dangerous in this episode. Until they found the weakness, that was a little weird. But other than that, I have to say it was a really solid Goosebumps episode. And so next now we have the Girl Who Cried Monster. And... This one is probably one of the greatest episodes of season one of Goosebumps. Definitely one of the all-time greatest Goosebumps episodes. Mr. Mortman as the antagonist was very, very good, I would say. And also, uh, you know, the special effects and the makeup were also very, very great. Especially how the, they did the transformation thing with Mr. Mortman. Also, the set was cool. And the main... In uh, basically, all of the acting was also very, very decent for a Goosebumps episode. And now we are at Calling All Creeps. And so this one's a little biased since, you know, my personal favorite Goosebumps book of all time is Calling All Creeps. And the Calling All Creeps episode is not as great as the book, but the costumes for the creeps were cool. The sets were cool. I'm sorry, I'm saying cool a lot. Why? Um, anyway, there's all of that. And basically, Calling All Creeps was overall... Pretty decent, really great Goosebumps episode. There were a few minute changes I would change to it, but it's really just nitpicking. And nothing really, so, you know, major problems with the episode. And so, yeah, Calling All Creeps is a really, really decent Goosebumps episode. And now we are at the Click Goosebumps episode. And I have to say, uh, this one is definitely the greatest. The acting, well, not the greatest, but it's a really, really really solid Goosebumps episode. I definitely enjoyed the acting in here. The acting was probably the greatest Goosebumps acting, I would say. And the whole concept's really cool. I'm glad they had more time to explore the concept of this remote in the Click Goosebumps episode, because in the Click short story, they didn't really have that much time to explore the concept of this remote, and it doesn't really make it as great as it could have been. But in the Click episode, I feel it's very... Uh, very, very scary, especially the twist. I don't know really why, but the twist, when I first watched it a little while ago, really scared me, personally. But yeah, Click was a really great Goosebumps episode. And now we are at Awesome Ants. And Awesome Ants 
It was also a pretty decent Goosebumps episode. I like the main protagonist a lot in this story, I'm not sure why. And the special effects for the ants were pretty cool. Um, also, the exterminator guy was a little strange and stuff like that. And how in the beginning that guy got rid of the ant was not very unrealistic. But still, it was kind of a strange Goosebumps episode. The twist was a little weird, but I have to say the main protagonist was great. And so were the special effects and stuff like that. Anyway, now we are at the Werewolf of Fever Swamp. And the Werewolf of Fever Swamp has a great episode. I don't like the book too much, but the episode has got so many really cool aspects to the story. Um, I really loved um, the werewolf and the transformation effects that they had with that. And the whole mystery of who actually is the werewolf. I think they pulled this off a whole lot better than they did in the story. I liked how they introduced the werewolves earlier on than what happened in the book, where they didn't really mention it until like two-thirds of the way into the story. And so, yeah... I have to say, Werewolf Fever Swamp's a really great Goosebumps book. And, or not Goosebumps book, a Goosebumps episode. And stuff like that, and the acting again was really great. Attack of the Mutant also was a really great Goosebumps episode. That's next on the list. And, honestly, the Mutant was pretty cool. The Adam West cameo was great. I really love that. Um, and, yeah, that's really all to say about the set design. When they're inside the building, <laughs> uh, was very cartoonish. And not that, you know good but other than that i have to say i was very much entertained by the attack of the mutant episode definitely one of my all-time favorites and now we are at revenge of the lawn gnomes and revenge of the lawn gnomes was another great goosebumps episode i have to say this one's probably the scariest goosebumps episode ever made i really really loved um the twist at the end i thought that was very scary and the lawn gnomes were very creepy as well so yeah, I have to say, Revenge of the Law Gnomes was a really, really great Goosebumps episode. And so now we are at the very first and best Goosebumps episode of all time. And I will have to say, it goes to Night of the Living Dumb. The acting was, or not Night of the Living Dumb, Night of the Living Dumb 3. That was very anticlimactic. But, you know, Night of the Living Dumb 3 is the best Goosebumps episode of all time, in my personal opinion. And that is mainly because slapping in here was... Definitely at its best, in, um, and special effects were really cool. The acting was pretty great for a Goosebumps episode, and overall, it's a really, really, really decent Goosebumps episode. And actually, you guys agreed with me in that whole voting thing that I mentioned way earlier on in this video. You guys agreed with me that Night Living Dummy 3 is the best Goosebumps episode. You actually like voted in the comment section, as I said before. And you guys um, voted for Night of the Living Dummy 3 as the best Goosebumps episode. So, my personal favorite is Night of the Living Dummy 3. And actually, you guys commented and said Night of the Living Dummy 3 was the best Goosebumps episode. I'm honestly kind of surprised. I thought you guys choose the Haunted Mask. But anyway, that's the end of my video, guys. I'm glad this is 20 minutes pretty much shorter than the first time I recorded this. So, that's really great. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope this video uh, was really great. And tell me what you think in the comment section below. You don't have to rank, you know, the Goosebumps episodes because that would take a long time. But still, tell me what you think in the comment section below. What's your favorite Goosebumps episode? What's your least favorite? Anyway, tell me what you think in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for 300 or 302 subscribers now. Thank you guys so much for watching. And that is the end of the video.